On a beautiful fall day in Southern Illinois, it's win and advance or lose and go home. FCS playoffs opening round, Nichols from the Southland Conference, Southern Illinois from the Missouri Valley, otherwise known as the Valley. Jim Barber and Doc Holliday with 50-yard line seats for this showdown today. SIU a huge favorite, two touchdowns to say the least. The winner of this game will get a trip out west to the Kibbe Dome next Saturday night, late night game against the Vandals of Idaho from the Big Sky Conference. But first things first, our game today. And for the visitors from Nichols, two outstanding running backs. They are Colin Guggenheim and Jalen Spears. And what do you like about these two guys at the most? Two dudes who can tote their rock. You got Jalen, 2023 Southland Player of the Year. He can catch the rock and he runs the rock. He gets going. And then you got Colin Guggenheim. He likes to tote the field between the tackles. Extremely physical run. I am looking forward to you pronouncing Guggenheim early and often today. Watch out for P.J. Jules from Southern Illinois. He's everywhere at two different positions here. Well, you got Spears and Guggenheim. They want to tote their rock, but P.J. Jules is going to be right there where they're trying to tote their rock. He's listed as a safety, but pretty much plays the linebacker position. 100 tackles. He will smack you in your face. Nick Hill, the head coach of SIU, says, I love the kid. Had him over to our house during the holidays. Many a time. Didn't come from much in Haiti, but he is about to end his career at some time as one of the more spectacular players with Southern Illinois. Eighth season for Nick as SIU head coach and Tim Rabot in his ninth year. And while Tim respects the Valley, he said, you know what? Our league, even with one rep, still is pretty good. Indeed. Now it's time to play some football. And because of that, the Nichols Colonels, who won the toss and deferred, which I guess, Doc, is what most teams do nowadays. They don't want the football first. They want to get the ball at the end of the first half and come back, start the second half with maybe a two-for-one as they are. Very good it. coaching strategy because if you have the ball at the end of the first half, you know you're going to get it at the beginning of the second half. You can give your team some momentum and change the whole aspect of the football game. So I take it you like that, huh? Love it. We're set. More than three hours of excitement awaits. And Davis, a solid return to the 25 yard line. And that's where SIU will go to work. And the quarterback, Nick Baker, the confident one. Passing at 67% this year. His only problem is fumbling. He's lost six fumbles this year, Doc. And with the quarterback, the quarterback's job is to make sure he maintains the football and get that offense going. Now, this SIU offense goes the way he goes, but he has to take care of the football, as you said. He's got Deontay Cox spread to the right side here, fighting through ACL injuries and knee problems. Could be a principal receiver today, and two receivers on their side, including number five, Isaiah Hartrip. And you just saw him moments ago, Vincent Davis, the third, number 11. Welcome to the playoffs, to Cox. And incomplete and defended nicely here. Let's talk impact players today. We've got several. We can spend all afternoon talking about some of the key guys of this game. We just mentioned Isaiah and Vincent. How about Rashid Lovelace? He's, he's just a freshman, isn't he? That's that nose tackle. He puts in that work down in the middle of that Nichols defense, but you got Hartrip and you got Vincent Davis. You got two different type of receivers. Hartrip, bigger receiver, he goes to get it, gets it, and Davis is the one they want to put in the slot and get him the ball in some space. Yeah, Hartrip is explosive, and Davis is kind of like a magician. He makes people miss. Baker trying to hit somebody here, and he does, and Vincent Davis the third, but Davis is out of bounds, and that'll bring us to a third and ten. I love what they're doing right there. You do it. You throw a nice little semi deep out route and Baker can't find anyone to throw to. But it's still a beautiful ball. He got it there, but just a little outside. But you got to love that Nichols pressure getting it on this quarterback. To Let's begin see this if game. Nichols brings the blitz here with that pressure. Uh Oh, somebody jumped off sides. Free play coming up. Pass complete in midfield. 
What a catch by Deontay Cox. Preseason number two in the Southland Conference. I imagine, Doc, it's going to hold because somebody jumped. Yeah, they did jump offside. And Nick and SIU, knowing they have a free play now, they went to this play a couple of plays Outside. ago. Defense. Defense. Number 51 in the zone of the snap. That penalty is declined. Result, first down. Thanks for taking time to hear from Brian Holland. Always, and here it is again. It's just a go route. They did the same play a couple of plays ago, didn't connect though, but right here, kind of back shoulder, high point. He goes up to get it. That's a perfect placement of the football and just a great catch because that was great coverage, but the receiver had a better catch and a better play. It's hard to defend that back shoulder throw, isn't it? Particularly when it's online. 27 yard pickup already, SIU into Southland territory, but nothing on that play. Line of scrimmage held up at a gain of nothing, so it's second and ten. That's Bo Elliott, or Roe Elliott, who has suffered through a lot of injuries himself, but uh, they say Roe is coming back. He is. He's coming back, but he took a step back right there. That middle of that Nichols defensive line, not having it. Baker with a strike at the 35-yard line. It's a first down. Deontay Cox, three years of knee injuries. Were you hurt in college much at Memphis? Oh, I got hurt all the time. Really? I got hurt, but I was still able to kind of make some plays like my guy Deontay. All Deontay did was just go up 10 yards, stop route, middle of the field, on the on the hash, plenty of space, and that's just easy money right there, Jim. But yeah, I got hurt quite often, unfortunately. I'm like, why are you making me sad? <laughs> this game just started, man. You got to work with me for three hours, man, so get used to it. Dane Whalen, number 97, just saw him in our picture. A little end around right here. This is Hartrup running to the outside and pushed out of bounds after a gain of close to five. Nick Hill, as we mentioned, is the head coach, but he doesn't call the plays anymore. He has given it over to his offensive coordinator, and he seems to think that that's a, a pretty good move in allowing him to kind of concentrate on other things. Blake Rowland, by the way, is the uh, OC, and they're all good friends anyway, so. They are, but and I like that play there. A little misdirection, a little trickery, and I love the blocking by number 41 on the edge that allowed to get them some space on the outside. Second and five. This one could go to the house. Tripped up at the five-yard line. Roe Elliott carrying for the 25 to the five. First and goal to go for the Saluki. Well, I'm telling you, this this run is so beautiful. It's just a slide over, a draw, start to the left, plant with your left foot and get outside, nothing but space and roll. Amazing vision, but even better blocking, getting it right down close to the goal line. Now, he probably wishes he would have finished. I'm pretty sure he does, but just a beautiful run and beautiful blocking on that play. I cheated him two yards. He's actually marked down at the three. JPEG. Cowgill, the center, threw a nice block and held hip band up to allow Elliott to skirt to the right side. That's a pickup of 22. This is Nichols defensively, as you saw by the graphic, and let's see if they can make a goal line stand here and force the Salukis into a field goal try. And time called. No timeout. Conversation between the headline judge Brian Davis and the referee Brian Holland. We'll reset the play clock. We'll set it at 25 seconds. Start Everybody off by went signal. to their benches to get an extra word in, but our referee said, "Come on back." Yeah, but he said, "No, forget about that. No breaking. Come on, let's play some football." <laughs> You're not sitting down. We've been waiting until two o'clock. Let's roll. Yeah, it's uh, it's early to take a rest, right? Nick Baker, the quarterback, third. 33 consecutive starts. And now for the three yard line, first and goal. Throwing to the end zone, incomplete, intended for Hartrup. And I know he wishes he could have that back because he had Deontay Cox just standing there all by his lonesome. I know he was going to the slot receiver, but the slot receiver had two defenders on him, and Deontay was like, come on, man, you've thrown it to me three or four times on this drive. I'm standing here all by my lonesome. That was Kendarius Smith, number five defending. Smith and all Southland first teamer. Second and goal. Elliott to the right side toward the end zone. Touchdown, Salukis. And they strike first. I love the physicality that Roe just 
put on this play. But not only that, if you watch number 70, you watch the offensive tackle of Due Torre. He gets out there, he gives a great block, but then you get Ro Elliott. This is what you want. I'm going to get the shallow pitch, and I'm meeting you at the one yard line, but I'm going to take you into the end zone. Just a very physical series, very physical drive, and capped off with a very physical run. Extra point is true. Three minute drive on that drive. Ro Elliott, injuries and all, carried the football three times for 26 yards and a touchdown. Absolutely love it. You know, they say Southern Illinois, they're from the conference. That's the SEC of the FCS. And I think they showed Nichols that they want to come out and impose their physicality on Nichols, and they were able to do that. Let's take a break. Let's see if the Colonels can counter. Pat McQuaid is the quarterback. We'll introduce him to you when we come back. We are on the road to Frisco, Texas. Doc Holliday, Jim Barber. Opening series, Southern Illinois. Marches the length of the field and strikes first to lead 7-0 on a row Elliott. Three-yard touchdown run. Doc, you mentioned the physicality, and that is potentially the difference between the Southland and the Valley. That's what they say. Big boy football, grown man football. Now, if you're Nichols, you want to make a good impression because you're letting the Missouri Valley Conference know and SIU know that, look, we're not going to be pushed around. I mean, we did go undefeated in our conference, so I'm interested to see how they're going to respond to what SIU just did to them. This return from the five-yard line. And the Colonels go to work prior to the 25 and the left-handed thrower, Pat McQuaid, quarterbacks the team. His numbers on the season so far. Biggest concern from his offensive coordinator, Greg Christoffel, is that he gets amped up. And if he gets too amped, the ball will come sailing out of his hands a little bit too high. Well, you get a little anxious. You know, you're one of those. I was one of those football players. That the nerves kick in and you need to calm down. That's why you. it's always important to have a nice, intense pregame so you can bring those nerves down a little bit. McQuaid was not only a safety in high school, he also was a long snapper. Nice Jalen Spears, right, Spears who we highlighted in the beginning for a short gain and a short swing passes is, is almost like a run, I suppose, in some ways. It is, and you can be successful with those, especially when you have a left tackle like Mark Bethelemy. I mean, that's exactly the side they want to. And then you got on the other side, SU, SIU, Ubay, Steed. So you got Steed and Bartholomew going at it, but swing passes, five, four to five yards. That's beautiful. Got to tell you about Bartholomew. He is from uh, Opelousas, Louisiana. That's the spice capital of the world. It better be because the name of the city is Opelousa. It's, it's the name is spicy. And he's spicy because yeah. you look the way, look at how he plays out there. Big kid, all Southland first team. Trying to lead the blocks. This is an all Louisiana front line, by the way. All from the state of Louisiana. Facing now a third and three. McQuay, first, second pass, and it's picked off. DJ Johnson inside the 25-yard line. How about that? DJ turns 25 on Monday. Happy early birthday, huh? Well, Jim, that's what we call pluckage. McQuay throws it out there, and there's literally three defenders out there. The receiver isn't even open. But DJ is there. He's like, you know what? My name is DJ, and I'm playing a DJ. I'm playing some music, and it's called theft, thievery. He just plucks it out of the air and gets a nice little return, and SIU in total control of this game so far. Yeah, let me correct something. He went out of bounds at the 35 still. Plus field for the Salukis already had 7-0. What a nightmarish start for McQuaid and Nichols. But this is what this SIU defense does. They're in their top, top 10. Yep. Empty backfield for the quarterback. Baker. Sure-handed pass to the inside or the outside. And nobody back defending there. So it's a pickup of close to eight, maybe nine yards on an easy toss to Justin Strong. That's what you do. You want to get your, ball, your playmakers the ball in some space. Just throw a nice little screen. Justin Strong with a strong catch and an even stronger run. 
After a nine yard pickup. First down. Isaiah Hartrip getting a chance to be a running back for the moment. And I love it. That's that tap tap. I mean, you get a you get the rock and you get cut. You get a cut. Receivers don't normally run the rock like that, but Isaiah. I like that. He's probably thinking of himself running back. That's not that tough of a job. Hey, but he's an athlete though. Yeah, you know, true. dealing with injuries. Like, hold on, a running back is a tough job. And I don't think I say I won't. I don't think he wants that action. <laughs> he needs to stay outside. <laughs> Coach calls him a pure athlete. First and ten in the red zone, inside the twenty. Sent a man in motion. Baker looking to the end zone, and that's going to be a penalty flag. Isaiah Hartrip. Defended by Kendarius Smith, an all-Southland first-teamer from Meridian, Mississippi, will likely pick up the penalty. Hold on, Jim. I, I, I understand. I love the camera work, but they go back shoulder, and the, the cornerback gets a penalty called on him. And not only that, he fixed he fixed the receiver's uniform. You can't. So you don't think it's fair? Do you? No, don't give him any hands. <laughs> That's in the period. Defense, number 15, 15-yard 15 penalty, automatic, first down. Let's take a look at the isolation of the round moments ago. Man coverage. It is. It's just, it's just a tap-tap go route and back shoulder. They, they were about to back shoulder him again, and all he could do is an obvious pass interference, obvious holding of about five penalties right there. First and goal chance for SIU to go up. Two touchdowns. Our spotter and a slash statistician is Jeff Melnick, who, by the way, carries a uh, a yellow flag with him, just in case we don't notice what's on the field. It's very professional. I can see it with my eyes turned the opposite direction. It's that loud, but I, I, I got love a yellow it. tie on. So I love it. Yeah. Hard. And there he is, just off tackle and nickel showing that you know we have some fight in there. But look at that drive. Look at the leg drive. Yeah. You've got to give him the ball again on this next play when you run the rock like that. Second and goal from the three yard line. Less than six minutes into the first quarter. Southern Illinois from the valley, establishing its physicality early. Justin Strong in the backfield with Nick Baker. Balance the line to the right side. Baker will keep. Baker is being chased. And Baker is knocked down short of the goal line. We'll see where the spot is. He'll bring up a third down. He'll mark it at the one. You know, you know what I like about this play? Nick Baker, see, he's 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 more quick than he is fast. Look how quick his feet are moving. But the defenders are there, but I like how he ducks under boop, and gets another half a yard. That's a huge play. Many people may not see that, but for him to duck under there and get another half a yard, because he could have easily got smacked back. But him being the smart quarterback and the smart player he, he is, he's able to get another half yard by doing it. Helps you to stay healthy, too. Indeed. Third and goal. And off straight ahead. Touchdown, Southern Illinois. Two score lead already in the first quarter. Justin Strong. This is what Justin probably told, told Coach. Coach, quit playing with you. Just give me the ball six yards deep and let me go straight forward and push these guys into the end zone. We tried, Nick. He, he, he tried. He was unsuccessful. Just give me the ball, Coach. You just saw me turn my legs and get us down to the three-yard line. So Justin Strong with another strong run and just SIU, that, that, that big beef and physicality is that's really paying off for them right now. Here's Jake Baumgart for the extra point. Southern Illinois with two early possessions and two touchdowns. This one, Doc, off the turnover. Turn, 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 touchdown. Six point seat. Turn, 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 six point seat. <laughs> Tim Rabot, head coach in his ninth season. Of Nichols from the Southland Conference is hoping for a lot better performance from Matt McQuaid. Pat came in with good numbers, but the INTs he had in his first three games, well, he's already off to an INT start here. Yeah, he started off the season throwing a lot of picks, and then the last several games he minimized the picks. They were able to win some games, but here he is 
10 interceptions coming into the game. I do my math. I went to the University of Memphis. That's an interception of the game. So this is the, you know, another interception starting this off. So that's what they do not want to have. Not only hire for your good looks, but your academic brilliance. Thank you, Jim. Southland will start. The Southland rep will start from past the 22. So it's early in the game. 8-21 remaining for his quarter, but is this a big series? Of course it's a big series because you want to respond some kind of way. Even if you can't get a touchdown, even if you can't get three points, you want to get some kind of positivity going. Put a couple of plays together, something going with this drive so you can get some, gain some confidence uh, on the offensive unit. McQuay, the pride of Solon, Ohio, just outside of Cleveland. At the controls, left-handed thrower and from the shotgun. They'll play with tempo from time to time. It was interesting. We talked to Nick Hill, the head coach of SIU. He said, you know, in our league, there aren't a lot of teams that play fast because everybody huddles. Yeah, and that's, and, and that's how this game has evolved. At one point, everybody was trying to go no huddle and tempo and trying to speed it up now. Like he's talked about, it, everybody goes to the huddle. So that allows the offense to gather themselves, but it also allows the defense to gather themselves as well. One yard on the play halfway through the first quarter. Three receivers near side for McQuaid. And he's got good ones in that. He'll throw to one out in the flat. Missed tackle and awfully close and in fast. In fact, past the sticks. Reception by Nino LeMay from New Roads, Louisiana. Played 11 games last year as a true freshman. That is a first down. And that's what you want. First down, gain some confidence, get the ball into some playmakers' hands. Nino, nice little simple out route, get it, get up the field, make someone miss, move the chains. And LeMay, the H wide receiver, as he's called, now flanks to the opposite side. From the 33. really behooves Nichols to put together lengthy drives and not be in a situation where guys like Jalen Spears who carry the ball there are behind the chains. And it's just nowhere for him to run, but I do like what Nichols is doing. Despite the fact that they're down 14-0, you still can't get away from your identity. If your identity is running the rock and you know you have two good running backs, continue to give them the ball, and hopefully Jalen Spears can break a long run for you. That can be hard to do when you fall behind 14-0. Let's see about their composure here. On second down, McQuaid stepping up, throwing. Has to go underneath. Short reception there will set up a third after the catch by Spears. A third and eight. And now another significant play on this drive. That's a good tackle. That was a good open field tackle because Jalen Spears is elusive. And you see DJ break on and come down and bring him down. And now has Nichols facing a crucial third and long. DJ Johnson had that pick earlier that set up the second scoring drive. Played on the number one high school basketball team in Indianapolis at North Central High. Need to get to the 43. McQuaid looking, throwing. That is a first down. Needed eight, probably got ten. Threw a strike to David Robinson Jr. How about this kid's family? His dad played football at Nichols. His mom was a volleyball and basketball star. So how do you think that meant, huh? I, I love it. You can tell he's from a basketball background because he knows the importance of position. He goes down the hash and just finds a hole in that SIU defense, sits down, pitch and catch. I have to say in the meeting, a guy had a very infectious smile as well. From the 45, back-to-back -back first downs. McQuay with man coverage on the outside. And left it just a little bit too long. Tended for David Robinson. It'll be second and ten. He had to want that one back because there was no one in the middle of the field. Had he led David Robinson closer to the middle of the field because he had him the, the defender on his hip, and he had nothing but space and opportunity right here. McQuay just missed that, and David Robinson knows. It. Down to about five minutes remaining in the first quarter. McQuaid looks to the sidelines. Let's see if there's a change of play. Plenty of time on the play clock. Who dips under 10? Four-man rush. McQuaid, little hitch and throw. Not even sure who that was intended for. 
Nino LeMay got his hands on it, but we have two receivers in the same spot practically. And that'll bring up a third down. And it's almost like they were trying to throw a screen for LeMay to catch it and for the receivers to block for. But even though that was incomplete, LeMay didn't even get his hands and fingertips on that ball. He had it. He showed some strong hands, but the defender, the cornerback, the DB, doing a great job of smacking it out of there at the end. DJ Jules around the ball again, as we mentioned in the beginning, he would be. Three receivers to the far side as they flank a tight end out there. Quaid has picked up two first downs. Can he make it three in a row? How about that? Quincy Brown, the C receiver from St. Rose, Louisiana, who arrived during the summer. And Nichols makes the catch, and McQuaid starting to deal now on third down. And there you go, just a skinny post route. Fine. You got the man to man right there. So y'all want you to beat your man, and that's exactly what he did. And McQuaid is able to back there. Nice blocking, giving an opportunity to step back there and throw something with that lefty leg. He throws a lefty leg, and what we talked about, Nichols, they have a drive going right now. McQuaid now five for eight for 38 yards after the interception has regrouped nicely. Well, there's Colin Guggenheim. I'm just going to cue you every time he Google carries the ball. Hey, nicely done. And what happened? He just picked up six yards. Well, it, it, run. Yeah, I guess at home they go, Guggenheim. That's right? what they say, yeah. All right. Nice Second down run. run. Look at his numbers for the season. Average only five yards a carry. Nichols on the move, trying to respond. McQuaid got a man wide open and threw a bullet. To Nino LeMay, it's incomplete, sets up third down with 3.49 to go in the first quarter. And he may have did LeMay, uh, uh, he may have helped him out right there because that really? defender was ready to lay him out. Now, was a, I love the way the play called, and I love the way they executed it because he had it, but had he thrown that ball a little lower and then LeMay would have went up to get it, yeah, that defender was laying, sitting there waiting lay some wood on Nichols so far very good on third down and uh, the Colonels convert again four-man rush McQuaid can run for the first down penalty flag thrown he gets the first down to the 30 but there's a flag in the backfield typically that's not good news for the offense we'll wait and see Brian Holland our referee He's the guy with the white hat, by the way. Oh, gotcha, yeah. <laughs> Holy offense, number 75, 10-yard penalty, third down. Mark Bethelemy picks up the penalty, so we'll redo third down, and now it's third, and a whole lot of yardage as the left tackle gets pinned with the infraction. And there he is, and that's that's all you have, the defender that's spinning around. And Mark Bethelemy, he has great footwork and great positioning, but when they try to run away from you, you have to let him go. But a lot of times that happens when you have a quarterback that scrambles and somebody is blocking and a defender abruptly moves. Offensive player has a tendency to want to snatch the jersey. McQuay trying to recover and does. And throws out of the pocket, threw out of bounds. He was out of the pocket, so it will not be intentional grounding. Smart play by McQuaid, but Colonel's got to give up the ball. It is, but you see McQuaid, he's kind of holding and, dra and holding and dragging that right arm a little bit. Mm. He's had looks like he has a brace on his right shoulder, but that's not his throwing arm, but you don't want to have any kind of injuries for, from, for him because you need him to be healthy. Kylan Dupree will punt. Biology pre-med major. Almost got to him, too. And into the end zone we go. Three, room, three minutes remain in the first quarter. So far, all Saluskis. Salukis 14, Colonels nothing. The winner of this first round game on to Idaho. Late night next Saturday against the Vandals, who have been putting up big numbers. They get the off week. Drew the bye. Their head coach, Coach X, said we deserved it, and they got it. 
I love potatoes too, man. I know. Is Idaho known for potatoes? I love potatoes. Really ever. Oh, any kind of way. French fries, mashed potatoes, mashed potatoes with cheese, uh, French fries with cheese. You got a bowl game named after him, huh? Yeah. Doc Holliday, Jim Barber. Saluki's 14, Colonel's nothing. Nick Baker at the controls. Baker with man coverage has a man. A lot of bumping going on. There'll be a flag. Second pass interference called against the Colonels as Kendarius Smith has had both violations. See, Jim, that's what happened. See, when they threw this pass on this end, you got 1-5 helping the receiver with his with his jersey. Patrick so now Bears. they know that. Defense, number 15, 15-yard 15 penalty, automatic first down. Now they know they got a mismatch with Deontay and, uh, and Kendarius, and they just keep going to him. You got a high advantage, and they know that Kendarius Smith, his, his confidence level is kind of small right now, so they keep going at him, keep going at him, and they're going to keep going at him. Deontay Cox and Nick Baker were high school teammates. You can tell they're often on the same page. A lot of bumping going on down at the 40, but this time, no penalty. Intended in, uh, again for the preseason number two out of the Southland Conference, Deontay Cox, who's been through ACLs, other assortment of injuries, and here he is looking uh, healthy and light of foot. First drive, nine plays, 74 yards. Second one after the turnover. Five plays, 35 yards, and Baker brought down at the original line of scrimmage. And you know who he was looking for again? Deontay Cox against Kendarius Smith. And you got to give it to Smith right now because Smith knows they're coming at him. But you watch the safety. He's going to say it over. He's watching them this time, so he does have some help. But you got to give it to Mr. Smith. He understands. He's able to hold the coverage. And because of that coverage, you get a nice coverage set. Hard to hold number 51 to from the defensive end spot, Joe Mason. Spent three years at La Tech. Third and 10, timeout being called by SIU. Well, Nick Baker's been under a lot of fire, and that might have been one of the reasons that Nick Hill changed his play calling from himself to his offensive coordinator, which he thought at that point would probably give a little bit more versatility, maybe a, a stronger voice, if you will. That's Blake Rowland. These are the number of sacks in three weeks. Consider, though, that South Dakota and North Dakota State, both very good playoff teams. But still, you want to you want to protect the quarterback, especially when you have a quarterback like Nick Baker, who owns pretty much every major passing record at SIU. You want to protect him, so you got to do some offensive line protections. You got to do some adjustments. You also got to use your running backs to keep them in to help to protect Nick as well, because they understand when they're able to protect Nick Baker and protect the quarterback, good things normally happen. It's a big point of emphasis suddenly by the Salukis who didn't run into that problem earlier in the season. Another potential offsides. Baker recognizes it. Throws for the first down. has got a receiver. Davis with a catch out of bounds. It's a first down to the 48. And it's probably going to be offsides again. Uh, Nichols. Flag is back at the 35-yard line. Offsides. Defense, number 51 in the neutral zone at the snap. That penalty's declined. Result in a play. First down. It's on Joe Mason, who had a sack moments ago. But you know what we saw right there? Talking to the Nichols head coach and the defensive coordinator, they said Nick Baker is good on and off schedule. And right here shows you how good off schedule he is. He got a little pressure, had to scramble, able to find a receiver. Nichols now docked three penalties for 34 yards, and they've been important ones, too. This time running to the near side of the field, Roe Elliott. Over 2,100 career yards for number one. I love that little short, shallow toss to the boundary. Just get the rock and get up the field. Don't waste any motion. Don't be trying to tempt dance. Don't try to dance. I need you to go straight forward, Roe. And Roe Elliott, he did indeed that great six, seven yard carry. It's what you want. Spoken like a true running back and a good one at Memphis, Appreciate by the way. Jim. Thank you, man. You you to call me handsome. You, you did good running back. Thank you. 
So the man in motion, Baker play action. You can do that with a good running game. Ball caught inbounds. Will be reception at 25 yard line. That's Aiden Quinn. His dad, Jonathan, is a high school coach or coach at Davidson Academy in Nashville, Tennessee. First of all, look at this throw. Look at the velocity and look at the footwork. Aiden Quinn with the catch and the tap tap. Good for 24. Back we come. Not a penalty flag. You got two defenders jumping up and down trying to defend Isaiah Hartrup. This time Patrick the side Andrew judge. Defense, number 15. Quan Poole called him. The spot of the foul. That's on Kadarius Smith. Down. That's the third time today. So what's he doing out there that he shouldn't be doing? Well, he's lost confidence, and they understand that, and they keep going. He keeps getting beat, and he's bad with his hands. He keeps grabbing. He can't grab. You got to move your feet, move your hips. And right now, they understand where he is in his head space, and he keeps doing the same thing. They may have to send Kadarius Smith down at least for a couple of plays or a series and let him compose himself because he is a good player that's why he's out there but right now mentally he's a little flustered and he's losing all technique out there on Isaiah Hartrup in the red zone here comes SIU again Baker with a fake to the end zone got him and it's Quinn touchdown this is threatening to be a route and the touchdown record now for Nick Baker 66 career touchdown throw the best of anybody at SIU more importantly a 20 to nothing lead in a playoff game here's Jake Baumgard off the staff from Ross Pedro 21 points in less than a quarter and all this is is a pump and go pump you go they're not guarding you hey Aiden Quinn just run past them back shoulder but it really wasn't meant to be a back shoulder Quinn just showing his athleticism he's able to twist that big body around put those big mitts on him get a touchdown and just beautiful cut and look at look at yeah yeah <laughs> wipe the haters off that's what that's what he's saying I'm wipe, wipe, is that what that is that's what he's wipe the haters off he's calling Nichols some haters right now and Nichols like okay I got you but Nick Baker and this SIU offense and this defense they just really have it going right now that's why I love working with you they understand all the signals we've got a 18 year old daughter at home we have to have her translate <laughs> occasionally <laughs> Well, if anybody cares, Ohio State got close, but Michigan beats the Buckeyes 30 to 24 as the Buckeyes were intercepted deep in Michigan territory toward the end of the game. So Michigan goes to the Big Ten Championship against Iowa. Hope it, hope the acting head coach doesn't cry after the game. Like, what's, what's, hope no tears. You know? I mean, Harbaugh is still there. You know? yeah, he's back now, too, officially. Three drives today, 74-35 in the last one, 80 yards, aided by penalties. Rude awakening for the visitors from Thibodeau, Louisiana. Oh, man, what a tackle there. Is that Jules? P.J. Jules, who plays well on special teams with a clock of Roe Elliott here. Woo! Oh my. Check that Zach Westmoreland with the tackle. My apologies. Gosh. See, kickoff return is the most violent play in all of football. And that is what you call a white out. I'm just glad the kick returner is still healthy and able to get up because that is what you want when you one of those runners running down on the kickoff team. You dream of hits like that. Westmoreland got the biggest one of the game so far. McQuaid, man over the middle. And a receiver he's had a lot of success with so far. As he throws a strike to zero Nino LeMay. After the play. LeMay's helmet comes off. He must come out of the game. But the reception to the 48-yard line. I love what LeMay is doing. They're still attacking. Just go up the seam. Run a nice little dig route is what he did. He was able to get some space get the ball passed right to him perfectly. Desmond Hearns was all over him. And a whistle. Southern Illinois coach wants to challenge the ruling on the field. The runner was down. 
Previous plays under video review. Ernst thinks he took it from him. Call on the field was a reception. No turnover to the 48-yard line, but right now, Nick Hill is going to challenge that and see if, in fact, they can overrule and get the ball. We were talking to the communicator today, Trip Self, who came by the booth to say hello. And, of course, the phrase here is that the play's not over until replay says it's over. Oh, Knee is down there. Yeah, he's down. Okay. I told Trip we would not second-guess him, but uh, no. And I, I, I love the route. It's, just a, it's a deep dig route. LeMay runs it perfectly. McQuay gets it to him. Nice play and effort by the defender, but LeMay was obviously down. It's SIU defense, 17th in the country in points allowed. Just 17 in a game. And in the top 10, as Doc referred to earlier, in tackles for losses. Doc, you're one for one. You do not lose any challenges. You're well, you, spot on. Well, you got to give it to LeMay because he did a great job of holding on to that football because he punched it out of there. He felt it coming out, and he was still able to reach down and grab grab it and secure it. It lets me know that LeMay been in the weight room doing his curls and his triceps extensions. <laughs> Play resumes at the 48 of Southern Illinois. So rookies lose a timeout. Not overly valuable in the first half. Pat McQuaid is the quarterback. To the sidelines and almost into the stands. Second and ten, he was pressured. Ninety-eight, Dewey Green was after him, and he wasn't the only one. It's like 18, Drake Johnson back there as well. Well, you get you get Mr. Johnson that goes right by uh, Bartholomew. Bartholomew just watching him and getting some good pressure on him. And McQuay just didn't have anywhere to throw the football because not only did they have pressure, you had great coverage in the back end. Second and ten to the ground game, and really they're going to need to have a good ground game. Colin Guggenheim, Guggenheim and Spears, I mentioned were competitors in high school. And in fact, Spears got the better of Guggenheim and his high school John Curtis by rushing for three touchdowns in a district playoff game. Now they're teammates. And Guggenheim with another great, great physical run picks up some good yardage, but Guggenheim got, he got Googled in at the end of that because he got dumped. Quarter is over. All Salukis, but just one quarter in the books. We come back. Another important play for Nichols as we start the second quarter. Welcome back. FCS championship on the road to Briscoe, Texas. Best seats in the house right there. Blankets and all. Jim Barber, Doc Holliday as we start the second quarter. Two rushing touchdowns. One throw by Baker. And where has the Nichols offense been so far? Prior to this game, the last six games are pretty good. It was, but they wasn't playing SIU. That Nichols offense is swallowed up, right? You see that, that SIU defense? That's what that Nichols offense is. It's in their belly. 23 rushing yards so far. Quarterback keep. And McQuaid gets the first down, I believe. Check that. Guggenheim in the Wildcat there gets the first down. So 25 yards on the game, but that's the third third down conversion so that's a positive I believe it is and I love that give it to the big back put him back there and let him take the direct snap so now he can choose his, where he wants to go instead of waiting on somebody to give him the ball fresh set of downs now for the 37 <laughs> four man front back to Guggenheim straight ahead running off tackle there carrying four a yard or so first quarter numbers dominated by southern illinois with 154 total yards to 86 but it's the penalties that really have hurt nichols plus a turnover i mean four penalties three of them pass interference now you you're having penalties and you're turning the ball over and on the other end you have siu playing good 
disciplined football in that first quarter. After actually a gain of two, play action, McQuaid in trouble. And throwing and gets rid of it. It'll be third and long. Nino LeMay, the intended receiver. Played 11 games, as I mentioned earlier, the, as a true frosh. Ted Coach was telling us, you know, he uh, had a great start the season, but suddenly he was drawing a lot of attention. He was. So it made it a little frustrating. And that's what happens when people start paying a lot more attention to you and start game planning around you. Now you have to show what you're really about when people are really putting game plans in to stop it. McQuaid now 6 of 13. Needs to pick up 8. In trouble with sacked. Back at the 47-yard line. And that's just a beat. There's nothing you can say. I'm gonna beat you. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna beat you at the line of scrimmage. Then I'm gonna do give you the short shoulder and go around you. Then I'm gonna go to your quarterback and say, I need you to come here. And I want to lay you down. And that's exactly what he did. Laid him down. And Bowdry with a sack. Forcing Nichols to give up the football. So they got into SIU territory, and that's going to be another problem. SIU already has a turnover. Well, you can consider that as good as a turnover, too. I mean, and right now, Nichols has to be like, what else can go wrong? And SIU has to be saying, what else can go right? And they're like, everything can go right. So now they're doing it on offense, defense, and now on special teams. You get the punter just can't handle the snap. And the fact that SIU was bringing the rush instead of going back, trying to set up a punt return, allowed the players to be in a position to get there and jump on that. Stephen Green and Chris Presto with the pressure. Southern Illinois with the football once again in Nichols territory. See if Baker goes for the kill. He is. Again, contact, nothing called. Devin Cowan back defending. Wait a minute. There is a flag. Excuse me at the 10 yard line. I was about to say there's got to be holding a pass interference again. I, I, when I didn't see a flag initially, I was like, well, maybe the ref was like, I don't want to keep throwing flags on him. But no, if you it's do, against Nichols. If you do it, you get flagged. That's interference. Defense, number two, 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. Cowan. The back defending Tyler Morton, who picks up the penalty, he's the strong safety. And that's never a good, if, if your cornerback can't handle Deontay Cox, a strong safety definitely can't handle Deontay Cox man to man. And you got to give it to SIU, they keep going to Cox, and Cox, he keeps getting his mismatch, regardless of who's around him. Now the short fields to the 26. Another toss to the outside. That went good for 18 yards. Ryan Schwendeman back up tight end. Who in high school was a pretty good defensive tackle. Sixth reception of the season. And talk about keeping that Nichols defense off balance. You run, run, you throw outside, now you go a tight end screen, and Schwendeman gets it and catches it and gets great yardage. They were not looking for that at all. First and goal for the nine. Baker to the end zone. Incomplete intended for Dante Cox. Second and goal. Well, Deontay has become his favorite receiver today, and why not? Baker 7 of 13 for 117. And trying to convert after a second Nichols miscue. Another touchdown. And I got to give it to Kendarius Smith. Great coverage right there. Didn't pass in the fear, had great position, got his head around, got his hands up, and he understands that they're going to keep coming at him. So that's when you play grown man football, get your mind in the game. Blockers in front, but the defense outnumbers. And so Isaiah Artrup is dropped for a loss. 
back at the 11. This is well defended here. Yes, this is what you want. This, this is why you don't want your defense playing hero ball. Everyone stay in your lanes, do your job, and he did his job, and you see two comes up, Jordan Jackson. I see where you're trying to go. I'm right here, though, and I'm going to mow you down. So great defense to play by Nichols. After the pass interference call was against Morton earlier. Third and goal from the 11. Eleven and 20, 11 minutes, 20 seconds remain. First half. Davis in motion to the left. Baker looking for him. Throwing to the end zone, incomplete. Isaiah Hartrup was the intended receiver, and that will bring on the field goal unit and an opportunity for Jake Baumgart to connect and make it a 24-0 lead. And Morton went back-to-back. Very good plays. I didn't give him credit to play before. I said Jordan Jackson, but it was Morton. Morton poured salt on the play before and then poured salt on that play right there. Very good coverage. And this is a win for Nichols to hold them to a field goal attempt. Morton leads the team and picks with four. No good. So Nichols makes a stand. 11 minutes remaining in the first half, and this is huge. When the Salukis lost the defensive coordinator to Northwestern as Dave and Braun took over as the interim coach, now the head coach of the Wildcats, Antonio James had to step in. This is August 1, a day for training camp, and Nick Hill says, where would we be without him? And you got you got this says a lot about what Nick Hill thinks about Antonio James and what the players think about him because you get a job a day before training camp and able to put together a unit that plays this exceptionally well, says a lot about Antonio. Pitching the shutout so far. The red uniforms and the black pants. A good look at Antonio. Also serves as the defensive line coach. And the numbers we mentioned earlier are strong. Seventh best in the FCS. And arguably the best conference in the FCS. Doc Holliday, Jim Barber. Pleasure to have you with us. We're in the second quarter. It's all SIU from the Valley. Nichols on offense, but Quain in trouble and brought down to the turf. E.J. Johnson already has a pick in this game. Kid that started his college football in the Big Ten at Iowa, moved over to Purdue, and then winds up at SIU. You mentioned pretty good hoops player in high school, and now playing a strong playoff game here today. Comes off the edge and doesn't give McQuay anywhere to run. Third and ten against the blitz. McQuay throwing a home run ball, and that is caught, I believe. No. Would have been a heck of a catch by David Robinson Jr., but ruled incomplete. And this is just a beautiful ball. Shotgun, McQuay steps up. You got to. Beautiful block, and David Robinson Jr. lays out for it. You have to give him 100 for the effort, and man, that's tough. And just beautiful ball, great catch, but great non catch, but 1,000 for the effort. You think Nichols is going to challenge this? It's under video review. Yep. Why not? Why not? Exactly. I was going to say the same thing. Why not? You're going to lose the first half timeout if you're unsuccessful, but. If for any reason this is turned over, that would be huge. I mean, yes, yeah, a big play. You haven't been able to get any big plays yet, so you have to challenge this because you may win it. And like I said, beautiful ball, McQuay. But look at the, the block by Spears, and McQuay is able to step up and get it out there, and David Robinson Jr. getting his Superman on and able to gather it. And What do you think? Man, that's tough. That looks like a catch to me. It looked like he was able to grab it and by him rolling over, you can see that the ball was secured. It didn't touch the ground for what I see. It looks like a catch to me. A beautiful catch at that. So David Robinson Jr., that's nice. Bob Johnson's our replay official. The communicator is trip south. Incomplete. Okay. Cameraman, hey, cameraman, clap, clap to you, man, because I didn't see that angle. So yeah, the ball hit the ground. But still, great effort, great effort. 
It will bring up a fourth down when it's confirmed. Assuming it is confirmed. Confirmed. And it has been confirmed. Put down. You're right, though. Beautifully thrown ball by McQuaid. And David just stretching out on that play, nearly made a sports center catch. And the cameraman to be all over it. I, I shoot football. It's kind of hard to stay with that football like that. So that's why these guys make the big money. They make you look good, man. You know what I'm saying? They make you look good. <laughs> Makes a lot of work. <laughs> Well, this is still going to go for a lot of yards. <laughs> That's certainly not the way it was designed. As Conlon Dupree got the kickoff, a low one, a line drive, and it winds up just past the 40-yard line. Update the office for the winners of the Southland Conference so far. The Colonels of Nichols from Thibodeau, Louisiana. Meanwhile, Nick Hill and SIU having its way. Nick turned over the play calling duties a couple of weeks ago after narrow losses to two really good teams in South Dakota and South Dakota State. But the problem he saw is that there were some replays toward the end of one of the games where he was so involved with that. Didn't get a chance to get play call except for the big offensive series that was to ensue. And decided afterwards, you know what? Let's hand this over to uh, to Blake Rowland and see if he can do a little better. And, and one of the things he'll shared with us during the week, Doc, is that I get more engaged with my team when I give up those duties. If the defense makes a good series, I want to be able to, you know, to high five when I come off the field. And, wasn't able to do that because I was so engrossed with what's my next series offensively. Exactly. He's a former SIU quarterback, so he's an offensive guy. He's an offensive coach that happens to be the head coach. And a lot of time, offensive coaches just look at the offense and ignore the good that the defense is doing. So he's trying to give them an equal amount of love. He said, this is my dream job, and I don't want to mess it up. Baker is going to run. Baker's got positive yards. And just before the first down marker is brought down at the 49. It's a carry of nine. Third and one. Good recognition by Nick as nobody was available to throw to. And a beautiful recognition because he rolls to the left looking for someone to throw to. Doesn't see anybody, but then comes back, cuts back, and puts up, picks up some good yardage. Now the Salukis are going to go fast, or at least give the impression that they're going to go fast. Need to pick up a yard with 8.30 to go in the second quarter. No problem for Elliott. He's going to carry five guys with him. To the 44, first down SIU. Winner gets the Vandals of Idaho next Saturday night. And Ro Elliott just has some strong legs, man. He does a good job of recognizing the cutback and getting up the field, knowing he only needs one yard. And that's what you want your running back to be decisive, especially on the third, second, third, and one like that. Well, count the defenders around him on that play. Fresh set of downs. Back to Elliott. Timeout situation remains two for the Salukis here in the first half. We have an injured Saluki at the 50-yard line. Timeout. It's at Deontay Cox. Cox, who's been through a slew of injuries this year, is down at midfield. Mm. What that kid has been through. With the ACL tears. Let's hope he is, he's okay. We hope he's okay, and everybody else hopes he's okay. But you know who does not hope he's okay? Unfortunately, Kandaria Smith, because he's been giving him the business. But I'm pretty sure he, you never want to see another football player get hurt out there. Sure. So it's good to see that he's able to get up and walk off, and he seems to be okay, especially someone who has been dealing with injuries. And I know exactly how that feels because I was injured quite often in my college career, and it's, it's a depressing feeling. So he seems to be okay. What was your most significant injury? Do you remember? 
Well, I had turf toes on both feet one time, played through it, hip pointers, man, I tore my MCL, uh, broke my hand, uh, uh, tore another ligament, ligament, had about, you know, 15 concussions. Do we need to go on and on? That's why I forgot my name. I, that's why I had to have GPS to get in. So, yeah, I had a lot, man. I was injured a lot. I believe you have the Memphis record for most carries in a game, 42. Yeah, you, uh, you did your homework on me. I'm not playing out here, Jim, but thank you again, Well, I got man. a story to follow that here. I guess moment, Arkansas, so. yeah. Yes. Second and nine. Second quarter, SIU up three scores. Win in advance, tournament. Welcome to the playoffs, round of 24 teams. Baker will release. I mentioned all those carries you had. It reminds me of a story when John McKay, back in the day, coached USC and O.J. Simpson. So O.J. carried the ball over 30 times in the game, and McKay had a great sense of humor. And the reporter says, it's not a lot for running back. He says, why? Ball's not heavy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's tough, man. It's tough. Baker over the middle, broken up. It'll be third down. It's like the deflection comes at the line of scrimmage. This is what you want to do. He wants to get it out quickly, but if you're in the pass rush and you can't get there, 9-7 does exactly what you're coached up to do. If you can't get there, stop. Get your hands up. Hopefully you can get it to Kimbae Mutombo on the pass, and he got it to Kimbae Mutombo on the pass. That was Dane Whalen from Ocean City, Kansas, wants to be a coach. When his schooling is done, fourth down, they're going to go for it. Baker looks. Releases incomplete. So good field position now for the Colonels. Can they mount a scoring drive? Well, that's a win. I mean, that's a win. Last time SIU has the football, they missed a field goal. Now forcing them to punt and get the ball back. So this is something because at first you thought this game was about to get out of hand. So it's it's 21 nothing. It's still not out of hand, especially when you have two and a half quarters left to play. Now, if you're Nichols, how do you march the length of the field and score? Because it haven't been able to dent the scoreboard yet. And you have turned the ball over once and muffed the punt the second time, both time leading the scores. Well, you just have to keep doing what you're doing, what you're known for. You know, Coach talked about, Rebo talked about being staying true to yourself. Uh, so you got to try to stick with the running game and do what you can do. Don't try to start, do anything new. And as we say that, they come right back and give it to Guggenheim going straight forward. Check that the second time or the second yes. muff did not lead to a score. It was a missed field goal. Short gain there of three. And three timeouts remain for the Colonels here in the first half. Season opened against Sacramento State and included TCU and Tulane in non-conference play. Colonels played a tough schedule prior to the league. McQuaid over the middle's got a receiver. That's a first down. Easy toss to David Robinson Jr. Robinson picks up 11 to the 47. And you tell Robinson, just go up the field, find some, some space, find a hole, and he does that five, six-yard stop route, curl around, Pat McQuay delivers it to him. With seven rushing yards, do you think the Colonel's going to abandon the rushing game? You can't because that's what they are. That's who they are. And it's, you know, you don't have to abandon the rushing game yet because you still got a lot of football. Lena Greta Greta with his first catch. All Southland second team from Pass Christian, Mississippi. That's a gain of six, second and four. Three in the line of scrimmage. Let's see what defensively Antonio James brings for Southern Illinois. Like to apply pressure. It'll be a run straight ahead. Just shy of the marker. Seems like this team now is a lot more on schedule than it was earlier in the first half. Early in the first quarter on the game by Jalen Spears, third and one. And that's what happens when you can get a couple of stops, you get some confidence going. And Jalen Spears and Guggenheim, that's why you have to continue to run because your running back is the conference player of the year, so you can't take him out of the game. Guggenheim leaning forward. 
defending the spot. 61, Reed Lambert leading away from his right tackle spot. But is it enough for a first down? Yes. Even though Guggenheim gets this first down, the, the kind of running back that Guggenheim is, is he's not the type of one I want to see you slide over and get a draw play. You want to give it, turn around and give it to him to let him get it off tackle and get some momentum and some steam going. But he's strong enough to get it right there, even get hit at the line of scrimmage, but still strong enough to get the yard needed for the first down. Brandon Combs made a nice tackle on that play. Would have been his 65th of the year. The play clock was not reset upon determining it was a first down. Please reset the game clock to 25 seconds for the start of my signal. So with the reset of the game clock and a fresh set of downs, we start from the 36 of the Salukis. Pat McQuaid, the quarterback. One clap, handoff Guggenheim. Nothing there. Swaddled up. Might have got a yard. And driven 10 yards back. That is how you defense, especially those defensive tackles, they're, deep, they're just not going. They're not going. They're winning the line of scrimmage. They're letting Nichols' offensive line know that we own this real estate. This is a home game for us. This is a home field, and this line of scrimmage belongs to us. And they're just not giving Nichols much space to run their football at all. But Nichols can't abandon the run, but SIU is trying to force them to do that. Cam Boudry, Devin Cowan up for the defensive side of the field for Southern Illinois on the play. Short pass to the flat will set up third and six. Well, one thing for sure, the Colonels have been pretty effective on third down. And they come through again. This is really four down territory anyway, but. But you know what I liked on his last play? David Robinson Jr. out there blocking. He's not only running routes, he's catching the football, but that's how you be a good teammate. You block for your other receivers when they get opportunities to get the ball. McQuaid three-step drop and fires a bullet to Robinson. First down inside the 10. David Robinson entering here as a man to watch as he's trying to bring his team back. And that's what you do when you have a player like David Robinson Jr. He's been getting open. He's been a mismatch, but you want to reward him because the coaches see him out there blocking and doing his job. You know he can beat man to man. So if you're blocking for other people, give him an opportunity to make plays. And so far in this first half, he's been making plays. On first and goal. The running game still not producing much with a buck 45 remaining in the first half. They may need to stay away from Cam Bowser. They just ran right into Cam Bowser, and Cam Bowser is not giving up anything. He's beating his blocker. He's not going anywhere, and he's right there. He's waiting for the running back to come to him, so he goes through the offensive tackle right to the running back and beats them both. Played the UT Martin 23 games before transferring. Little pitch in the backfield. Spears out of bounds. Stops the clock with 117 remaining. I love this little, this little short, shallow toss, but uh, watch the defenders like, yeah, you better get out of bounds, but. Just SIU, not only are they physical, they're showing the, all the speed, and they're just waiting up and challenging them to come to him. So he claps to him like, you better get out of bounds, my guy. Dune Smith made the tackle. First time in the red zone for the Colonels. And a big play coming up. Rushing attack so far for the Colonels, ineffective. And Spears and Guggenheim have rushed the ball 14 times for just 41 yards. It is third goal for the eight. Not likely a running play here, though. Well, when you look at that SIU defense and you do your scout report, you see why they're top 10. Because they're just not giving up much of anything. Nowhere to run, nowhere to throw, nowhere to hide. Let's see how many Antonio James brings. Instead, they will run. Guggenheim straight ahead. Picks up six. Fourth and goal. That's a pretty good call when you think about it because 
Now they're within a yard or two of a touchdown with one play to go. Fourth and two. And the one thing I like about Guggenheim, he always falls forward. Now he got dumped earlier, but as a running back, you always want to be going forward. That means you have forward progression. That means you're running hard and you're running with some kind of effort and determination. Two yards too uh, long for a bush push here. Well, you got a Guggenheim. You do a Google Guggenheim Google. Okay. Google a Guggenheim. You do a Guggenheim here. They're going to use a timeout here to decide if they're going to Google Guggenheim here. <laughs> I'll calm down my partner here First in a moment. Time time out. Big play coming up for the Cardinals when we come back. This is the longest drive of the game by either team. 12th play of the drive. Need two for a touchdown. What's your call here? Guggenheim. I go with Guggenheim. Or, you know what? This is what I do. I do play action because Pat McQuaid, he's pretty good feet. And they probably expect you to give it to Spears or Guggenheim. So I do a play action. RPO. That didn't work at all. Fooled nobody. McQuaid swallowed up. No points out of the drive. And in the middle of all of it, PJ Jules. Should we be surprised? Not at all. And the RPA. RPO turns into a no-no because everybody did their job. You watch the defenders. I got this running back. I got you. I'm spying the quarterback. Everybody doing their job, and there was just nowhere for Pat McQuaid to go. 6-1-209, Jules up for the Buchanan Award. 20-plus years of age and a favorite of the head coach. Meanwhile, Tim Rabot's team denied at the goal line. P.J.'s a baller. He's a baller. Southern Illinois will take a knee. And it appears Nichols will do nothing to stop the clock. Nichols will get the football to start the second half, but it was such a big play there. If you get a touchdown and you come back with the ball to start the second half, you're in, you're in business, you know? And Southern knew how important that drive was for Nichols, and they just slammed the door on them. They end the first half like they started the first half, straight domination. Coming up at halftime, Lee Corso. And the headgear. But in the meantime, Southern Illinois trying to book a flight to Moscow, Idaho, and play the Vandals next Saturday night. Welcome back to halftime. You know, college football is full of traditions. And for the past 27 years, Lee Corso has had one of his own. As coach, he has made his 400th headgear pick on college game day. And we take a look back at the history of his headgear. When Elsie puts on the headgear every Saturday morning, that is the moment when the day of football can start. Could have never have, have dreamt that it would have become where we are today, where fans every week, that's what they wait for, to see which headgear he's gonna put on. I like Ohio State speed and power, but I question their place kicker and their punter. The headgear tradition started in 1996 at Ohio State. Herb Street was fairly new on the show, and Kirk's wife, Allison, had been an Ohio State cheerleader. He thought I might have some kind of in to try to get Brutus's headgear. They had to do some very high level tense negotiations. I'm telling you, it took three or four different back and forth until finally they green lighted Brutus. I'm telling you one thing. <laughs> Fuckers! Let's just examine the Brutus head. It's a head representing a nut, a two tone nut. Oh. I like the fuck eyes. So it's ridiculous looking. You can't help but laugh. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> and when he sensed that that was an entertaining moment that resonated with fans across the sport, he embraced it and it's become a beloved tradition. Colorado in a big upset. I remember him as a young kid watching college game day and Lee Corso was on there and putting on the headgear. He is college game day. I feel like I've been watching Lee Corso do that since, you know, I was in high school. 
the different antics he's used and mascots he's used has been pretty incredible. Higher wolf costume, the purple cow! Cows! To this day, I still watch and anticipate to see what he's going to do. Go Navy, beat Army! Seeing him fire off the guns is pretty funny. <laughs> My favorite one, we're at Texas, and McConaughey starts wrestling the LSU Tiger head off of LC. There was a little trickle of blood. Katy Perry was incredible. Like, she damn near broke my man's nose, taking the mask I had off of him. I think the, the, the best one might be the, the outtakes. How can you pick against that simulator? Throwing out some, some words that might, might needed to be edited. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite memories definitely include live animals. We got a live duck on the set. He's not afraid of game cocks. He's not afraid of alligators. He's not afraid of dogs of any kind. That dog is beautiful. That dog is ugly. Give me this thing here. I think the best part is when coach does the okie doke, where he grabs one head, gets ready to put it on, and then he chucks it to the side and grabs the other one. I'm going with sweet old Alabama. <laughs> Anytime I'm watching and you don't know, you know, which, what he's going to pick up, that's all pretty exciting. Penn State! Give him that hand. Does that mean you're going to go against your first law, Brutus? <laughs> Coach Corso is a maestro of the crowd. He can take them on a ride like not many people in the history of television can. Corso <laughs> with the duck. He's always got something ready for the people. And to see him come out as Ben Franklin was just absolutely incredible. I found it, Ben. This is my school. My best moment is when he picked Texas to win the national championship. Tonight, they shot the entire universe. And all the other guys up there were totally against him. I'm going with Texas Longhorns. Hook up, Texas. <laughs> and then we won. And I've praised Coach for that ever since. There's time with Bill Murray, we're at Death Valley at Florida State, <laughs> and he comes up, Chief Osceola, and he's dancing, and he's dancing, <laughs> and Bill Murray sees that, and he picked Clemson, and he picks him up, <laughs> WWE style, <laughs> it's chaos everywhere. Somebody that tried to copy that would be like, it would be silly. There's only one person that can do that, Lee Corso. I think he's been a great ambassador for college football and has brought some great perspective, but also brought laughs and fun to a game that we have to remember is still supposed to be fun and supposed to be a game. What he's provided to so many households, what he's provided to so many of us as coaches, he put a lot of fun in the game. I just can't thank him enough. <laughs> For Lee Corso to put on that headgear 400 times, it never gets old. Roll Tide! It's sincere, it's authentic, it's genuine, it embraces the fans, it embraces the tradition of what makes this sport unlike any other and what makes Lee Corso a college football broadcaster, an icon that's unlike any other who's ever been involved with this sport. And God bless the United States of America! <laughs> The fact that I've got a chance to sit next to you all these years and watch you do your thing and just learn from you, it just taught me so much about this industry, watching you perform and, and the way you did it. There he is. Hey, the Kirk Herbstreit Show. We love you so much. You're a piece of gold that we cherish every single week. The legendary coach Lee Corso. When we come back here at halftime, a look at the brackets of the NCAA FCS championship. Doc Holliday, Jim Barber at the break. 21-0. Southern Illinois. What's at stake? A lot. The winner gets to go to Moscow, Idaho next week to take on the Vandals, who put up 63 points in their final regular season game. Richmond is rallied against North Central. They will go to UA Albany if that holds. Mercer, if that holds, will face South Dakota State defending champions. How good is South Dakota State? 
outscoring opponents by 300 points this year. And Doc, get a load of this. Their second closest game of the year was the spring game between the offense and the defense. Against each other, huh? Yeah, the second figures. closest game. Go figures, go that's figures. That's how good they are. That's a program out there. From the Valley. The other side, Lafayette and Delaware have gone back and forth, and Lafayette with a late score now has taken the lead, although Delaware is threatening. Sacramento State and North Dakota, nothing but touchdowns today, and Sacramento State wins 42-35. That'll be a fun matchup next week against South Dakota on the road as the Missouri Valley continues to flex its muscles. And, of course, we're seeing that today in the SIU game, all FCS championship games on the ESPN networks leading to Frisco, Texas, and the national championship in early January. And do not discount Montana or Montana State, both getting buys the first week. I love this bracket. I love this the football that's played in the FCS. And you look at Montana sitting up there, they're just waiting. But I'm with you looking at that South Dakota Sacramento State matchup, three versus an unranked. That is where you want to go. Second round and continue to move on. And Southern Illinois is trying to get past their bracket, the left side, and get over to the right side where you have a number of Missouri Valley Conference teams. Oh, yes. The NCAA FCS championship coverage, as you know, Continues next weekend. Second round coverage beginning Saturday on ESPN+. Plus. Ted Emmerich and Tioka Jackson will have the call of Idaho in the winner of this game. For more info, visit NCA.com, the home for all 90 NCA championships. About the emotion today of the Salukis and the defense so far from number 10, who we'll talk about in a moment. Welcome back to the Division I FCS Championship Series. Jim Barber and Doc Holliday live from Southern Illinois. Up of the job, Zach Barola has done up front. Number 10 has nine, nine tackles today for Southern Illinois. And along with Brandon Combs, he has made the line of scrimmage no man's land for the Colonels. He's one of, he's one of the reasons why they not giving up anything on defense. Rushing the ball 19 times for just 14 yards. This is Roy Elliott to the end zone. SIU's first score, and then DJ Johnson with a huge pick right here. Pluck it. We just saw a touchy. Then you got DJ come back with the pluck it, then you come right back. Mr. Strong, strong arms his way into the end zone. How about one more? Aiden Quinn. Beautiful ball. Back shoulder, twisty touch. Touchdown. Shake the haters off. <laughs> I understand that now. <laughs> Again, 14 rush yards really sticks out because no pressure being able to apply by that. Nichols front line, even though they've tried their best, they have converted five of 10 times at third down, but I thought that last series in which they failed to get any points down at the goal line was a monster. Yeah, it hurts, man. It hurts. You have some momentum going. You have something going, but Southern Illinois showing them, look, we started this off dominating. We all, you all, we're going to send you all to the locker room. Something else to think about this physicality and this butt whooping that we're putting on you all. But Nichols, Tim Rebo, tough team, not a good coach. Still time left. But now it makes every offensive series even larger for Nichols. This time becomes a major concern. Terry Matthews, number one, is deep. Anticipating the second half kickoff. The winner gets the Vandals next week at the Kippy Dome, which will be rocking. This is Matthews at about the 10. Little sidestep. Blasted out of bounds. Flag goes in before the contact at the 30. All the penalties in the first half belong to the Colonels and none to Southern Illinois. Ruling on the field is a fumble recovered by the receiving team. During the return, holding, receiving team, number 43, 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul, first down. Well, what else can go wrong? Well, they could have lost that fumble. That could have. They, at, least, at least they got the fumble back. Good point. At least they got the fumble back. Already have one turnover. We highlighted that for you during the halftime break. The 
And he did. He lost it, twisted around his back, comes out. But luckily, his teammate jumped on his head. John Carrington, the third on the football. Inside the 50, McQuaid, incomplete. Well, when you have no running game, you have to rely entirely on the pass. And because of that, puts more pressure on the quarterback, and they can tee off against McQuaid, who's 10 of 19 for 108. And that's also a tough pass, too, because he goes on the play action, the bootleg, and he's throwing against his body, trying to zip it out there. And you saw that he just didn't have enough velocity on it to get it there. David Robinson has become the principal receiver now for this team. Over Robinson is fourth catch of the game. He's been targeted eight times. Where would they be without number five? Mentioned earlier that mom and dad, both graduates of the Colonels, have both played sports there. So I don't think there was any doubt where he was going to go to school, right? No doubt about it. No doubt about it. And Nichols and Coach Rebo are glad that he he's here because he has been one constant and one consistent player for them today that's been able to make some plays. Now for the 27. Opening minute, third quarter. Been a tough day for Jalen Spears. Alan Guggenheim had rushed for four yards of carry in the first half, but as a team, there's been nothing available. And you look at Dylan Smith, he just does a great job of beating the offensive tackle, slides under his shoulder, gets in position, and just brings Jalen Spears right down. And he still he should be feeling and playing with all the confidence right now. Yeah, there's Dune Smith up to make the tackle there. Back to the run game and give Rebo a lot of credit here. He knows he's got to run the ball sometime. Spears with a positive gain here, sets up a third and, and five. Just haven't been able to pay off any of these drives so far, particularly the one at the end of the first half. No, they haven't. You know, but, but when you're a running team and you use the run game to set up the pass game, uh, you got to stick with it because right now you don't have any big heavy hitters that you can go down field and but they do have heavy hitters And that's Baldry again. Yeah, yeah, get your dance on big dog. Get your dance on. He is 62 291 And that's just easy work he beats beats them on the snap and just goes right around him I keep calling it the short shoulder, but he does he just gives him a swim move goes right past him and McQuaid doesn't stand a chance. Antonio James' stamp on this defensive unit has been something else, hasn't it? It is, and especially on that defensive line because he is the defensive line coach. <laughs> well, that takes a Southern Illinois bounce, and even more importantly, because it bounced on the right hands there of uh, one of the Gunners, Jameer Khan. They'll have the football at the 40. That could have been a disaster. Let's talk about the drives of this game for Southern Illinois, which were strong to start with. And even though they faltered toward the end of the first half, the three scores have been monumental. But when you come out, look at that nine plays, 74 yards, touch. We're showing y'all that we overwhelming y'all. You come back at five plays, 35 yards, not overwhelming, but get another touchy. Seven plays, 80 yards, another touchy. Kind of took the foot off the gas a little bit, but still very much in control of this game. Plenty at stake in this game, too. Trip to the second round. Elliott racing toward the house. Touchdown. SIU, welcome to the playoffs. 60 yards. When I'm telling you I love this run so much, watch Ro Elliott get this ball on his draw play and watch the patience. He gets it and he doesn't immediately go upfield. He gives it time to open up. Look, you tap, tap, see a hole, get through it. And look at the block right there by the offensive lineman. And nothing but space and opportunity in there. Ro Elliott, beautiful patience on that, beautiful cut, and he shows the speed that he has to get it to the house. A yard shy now of 100 yards for Ro Elliott. It's been all Southern Illinois all the time. Another look. Look at the block you talked about up front. And Elliott off to the races.
Now I want to go back to that touchdown run by Ro Elliott. Now, this is a great run by him, but check out the right tackle, number 70, Adu Torre. Snap the ball. I got you, man. Move out of the way. You move second level, get to the linebacker, and he's able to seal it in. Ro Elliott, he does what you want running back to do. When you cut, cut tight off the offensive lineman's behind, and he cut tight off of his behind, and he got behind that defense for a touchdown. Great blocking by the offensive line. Great blocking by the offensive tackle. Great run by Mr. Rowe. Torrey is 6'6", 310. Born on April Fool's Day, hailing from Dakar, Senegal. Fair catch being called, so the football will start for the Colonels from the 25-yard line. The rushing game has been non-existent, and that has been a major part of their attack coming into today. But when you look at the scouting report, you come in, you know you have two good running backs. You have the Southland Conference Player of the Year with Spears, but they haven't been able to get him going in the passing game. They haven't been able to throw, throw it to him. They can't get anything going up front, but they knew that SIU defense was extremely physical and tough. You see it on paper, but you don't know how physical and tough they really are until you get out between these lines, and Nichols is finding that out the hard way. Yes, if you're familiar with the Missouri Valley, you know just how good this league is. Even last week against one of the worst teams in the conference, Indiana State, they were able to sack Nick Baker a handful of times. And, you know, Nick Hill was trying to sell us on, look, that wasn't the typical Indiana State team we expected. It just kind of shows you even the bottom of the league. And the Valley on a given day can be can be pretty decent. Because every team in the Missouri Valley, they're, they're going to construct their team to match other teams. They may not have the talent, but physical-wise physical, physical wise and body-wise, you're going to look the same. Colin Guggenheim. May have received a yard. It'll be third and one. Quincy Brown comes in as a wide out to the far side. Only need a yard to continue this series. And they'll run for the yard and then some. They've been quite good on third down. And finally, Jalen Spears finds an open lane. That's why you keep giving it to your best players. If your best players are your running backs, and you guys give it to Jalen Spears, offensive line does a great job of sealing and letting Spears get outside nothing but space. And if you can get him into some space, you give him an opportunity to get big chunks or to make big plays, and Spears did just that. Spears got 25 on the play, which more than he had in the first half. Now McQuaid with man coverage on the outside. And a long pass goes incomplete, shooting the home run and trying to offer more positive running game, do a little play action, which is where play action can be effective. You get those linebackers starting to uh, sneak up in the box. That means you have less defenders. It does, but also you, uh, Antonio Coach, he understands and knows that the back end of his defense, his DBs, they can cover, they can play. They haven't get, given up any big plays. You, We've seen David Robinson make a couple of plays, but... Uh, this defensive coordinator has a lot of confidence in his defense, and I can see why. Another play action with McQuaid, and it's intercepted! <laughs> Jalen Reed, there's a flag on the play. Make that Branson Combs. Combs with a pick. He had seven first half tackles. Now he's got a pick. Here's the penalty flag. How Ruling on the field has been intercepted during the return. Illegal block in the back. Intercepting team number 97. Ten yard penalty from the spot of the foul will be first down. Southern Illinois. That's the first penalty I believe of the day, and McQuaid looks like he's shaking up a bit. 
Let's watch Combs again. But you look at this. They fooled him. Combs fooled him. They came out. Thank you, had man to man. But Combs sitting there. McQuaid probably thought he was going to rush, but Combs comes back, drops in the coverage, and McQuaid throws it right to him. But he's right in positioning. But that's one of those things that Antonio James, the defensive play calling, putting his players in position to make plays. Combs in a position to make a play. He made a play. He's had quite a game so far, hasn't Branson? Five minutes into the third quarter. And a strike by Baker. To the 26 yard line and a pickup of close to 14. Vincent Davis, the third, who transferred from Charleston Southern. Now over 600 yards on the season. A couple of touchdown receptions, 48 catches. Almost identical numbers to Isaiah Hartrip coming in the other outstanding white out. And that's just pitch and catch. Vincent Davis just goes up five yards, turn around. I give it to you. No one is there. You by yourself catch it. Do something with it. Fake to Elliott. Baker still looking and scrambling. Got some room to run. And puts his head down. And he gets close to the 20-yard line. It's a tough cat, isn't he? He's an extremely tough cat, but I know what he's telling Aiden Quinn because Quinn is looking for the ball, but he should have known that Baker was going to run this ball. But as a receiver, you still want to be keeping yourself alive, but he should have realized that my quarterback is running. Let me turn around and block. But still, didn't matter. Baker's still able to get some great yardage on that. Got three on the play, second and seven. Roy Elliott, who had that 60 yard touchdown run earlier in this third quarter. FSIU hangs on to this lead, and it should. It will prepare for a trip out west next week. Nichols trying to avoid the long plane uh, flight back and an end to its season. So it'll be third and six from the 22 with eight to go. In quarter three. This is a number that SIU is trying to get a lot better. At 30% in the league. Four for six today, though. Give to Elliott. That number will improve. Ro Elliott breaking a tackle down to the 11 and a pickup of 11. You know what? Sometimes you can be lucky with play call. You see Nipples bringing pressure from the left side of that defense. SIU goes the other way. Look, counter jab, and Ro Elliott shows great balance, puts his hand down, and finishes the run strong. And that's just a crush to that Nichols defense because you saw them trying to bring some pressure, but SIU had it called perfectly. They go in the opposite direction. Space for Roe to run. Mr. Elliott, balanced. Great run. 141 yards on the day and counting. First and 10 from the 11 of the Colonels. Baker to the end zone. Intended for Isaiah Hartrip, who thought he should have had it. Considered to be the most explosive player on the team and then going to the weight room to try to improve his, improve his opportunities he is Isaiah Hartrip. But they got to give it to it. Got to give it to Malik Woodry right there. He just wasn't going. That's just good coverage. Hartrip thought he had it, and then Malik Woodry was like, nah, you don't have it. I'm still out here playing. We may be down, but I'm just going to give you all I have until this last light. Good for him. Second and 10. To the run game. Justin Strong carries. By the way, the numbers for Roe Elliott. Nine rushes for 111 and two touchdowns. Toting that peel. Anytime you get a big chunk like he got a big chunk, and he's been running strong in his SIU. I mean, SIU just physical. They just, see, they're overwhelming Nichols, but Nichols is not being overwhelmed. And what I mean by that, they're overwhelming Nichols, but Nichols is still fighting. Sure. Third and six from the seven. Can pick up a first down inside the two. Play clock at three. Snap to Baker. Looking and throwing. 
Touchdown! Number 11, Benson Davis the third. And that is what you do. Vincent Davis is one of those receivers you put in different positions. You put him in the slot and just tell him to run a shallow crossing route. He finds the hole because Nichols is in a zone and he does exactly what you're supposed to do. Settle down and he gets the ball placed to him perfectly on a string and another touchdown. I asked head coach Nick Hill during the week, how deep can you run in the playoffs? And he said, look, I don't want to think about that. I'm concentrating on today. They can start looking ahead to next week. With a five touchdown lead, Baker and company are heading west to face Idaho next Saturday night. Let's go back to December 1983, Johnson Haygood Stadium, Charleston, South Carolina, the Salukis won their first then known as 1AA championship over Western Carolina. 43-7, Rick Johnson was the starting quarterback. The head coach was Ray Dempsey in his eighth year. They finished 13-1. and one. Lone loss was regular season finale at Wichita State. Indiana State ranked number 14 when they played SIU on October 22nd. Kind of the sign of things to come with the Valley. And they are going to take a step closer to the national championship with this win today. Let's compare defenses going back to 83. And points allowed, not too much difference. 17, and that number is going to get better today if they continue to pitch the shutout. Same thing with yards allowed as they've shut down the rushing attack for the moment that the Colonel stepped on the field. Are you surprised at all, Doc? No, not at all. Stingy back then in 83, stingy here in 2023. Uh, of course, that 83 team wins the national championship. You got this 2023 team with a similar kind of defense. And we know defense wins championships. So if they can play this kind of defense and play this kind of together, you got to give SIU a chance. By the way, when were you born? What year? 1973. So you, that didn't put a graphic up there for 70. <laughs> you put it, man, you're just a kid then. Yeah, 70. Yeah, I was, look I was like a kid now, too. too. Appreciate it, man. God is good. It's all like it's kind of good. You know? Amen. <laughs> <laughs> well, you get 38 points last week. You get 35 this week. Maybe Nick Hill's decision to turn over the play calling has uh, been a smart move. It, it allows him to focus more on being a head coach and managing both sides and managing everyone. You know, we talked about the addition of coordinator Antonio James as the DC on this team and getting the job August 1. Which could not have been easy, but man, has uh, he been good at that? And it lets me know he had a good relationship with the defensive players because I'm pretty sure you have somebody like PJ Jules. He's telling coach, "This is the guy I want. This is the guy we want. This is the guy we trust." And of course, Nick Hill says he has a great relationship with with, in, with them anyway. Tony James, extremely smart, hardworking guy. He deserved the promotion. He got the promotion, and now he's paying off for him and for head coach. That's a drop, so it'll be fourth and two. David Robinson Jr. doesn't drop many. Yeah, that's just tough right there. Pat McQuaid throws a good ball and just slant route. Nope. Sometimes it just happens that way. But David Robinson doesn't have anything to feel bad about because he's played no, sir. a great game. He's been competing. He's been blocking. He's been catching. He's been running his routes. Kylan Dupree back to punt for the Colonels. Isaiah Hartrup at his own 35. And he's got to go back. Good looking punt. Gonna land at the 12-yard line, 55 yards, no return. Think these kids know the score of the game so far? That game up there is more competitive than this one. Man. <laughs> Keep the camera on there. I think there might have been a penalty there. Nick Baker's numbers today: passing touchdowns, now a career best, along with the other career bests. At SIU today, 10 of 20, 141, and a couple of scores. 
and he's got a chance to take his team deep into the playoffs. But the task next week will not be easy with the Vandals at the Kibbe Dome. It's the stash called Nick the stash. The stash got it done today. Hopefully he gets an opportunity to try to get it done next week. But the thing about Nick is that they just didn't need him to lose the game. And he has not lost the game. He's managed the game well. He's been able to go out here and has his defense doing what they have to do. And he's played a great game. Does he look a little like Aaron Rodgers? Maybe just a little. Four minutes remaining, third quarter, all SIU. Baker with a friendly toss out to Deontay Cox. And Cox swarms his way through from the 18-yard line. All the way to the 38 and a pick of a 20. Deontay still doing work. Baker like Deontay, Mr. Cox, what I'm going to do, I'm going to throw a screen to you, okay? I'm going to throw a screen to you, and I want you to show some speed and some quickness because we want Idaho to watch something be afraid of something next week. And they did just that. Yeah. Deontay Cox still staying in the game. Give uh, Idaho coach X something to think about, right? Huh? Nah, they haven't seen He's though. waiting. No, he's, yeah, he's waiting, though. They're waiting. Waiting and watching. They're, they're listening to you, too, Jim. They're listening right now. Trust me. And getting set for SIU. He hopping on a plane. Dustin Strong carries. Clock continues to move. Nice play there up to the 46, maybe the 47. That's good patient running by Justin Strong as well. Catching the pitch and just being patient because a lot of times running backs want to get it and get gone, especially on a, on, on a pitch out, going to the short side. But Justin showing some good patience right there and finding some hole and picking up some good yardage. Book on him, good downhill runner. Hard to bring down. Elliott, who is that pure running back with a great vision and a 60-yard scamper for touchdown. Strong also has a touchdown in this game. And now you can put the ball on the ground, pick up some first downs, kill some clock, and get through this one and get ready for the next one. Yeah, Jim, if your, if your last name is strong, you, you it better be hard to bring you down. It better not be easy to bring you down. Reminds me of Carson Steele of Ball State who moved on to UCLA in the portal. I mean, there are just some, some names. Yeah, really. you better run like your name, my yeah, guy. Run like run. your name. So were you known as Doc in college then? Or? I've been I've been called Doc Holiday since I was in middle school, junior high school, really? junior high school back then. Yeah. Uh, sports name or just a family name? Just a nickname. nickname. Yeah, just a nickname. Okay. I'm just killing some time here. That's okay, buddy. man. <laughs> and Baker swallowed up. That hasn't happened very often. On a third and one. Hey, by and Perry Gansey still playing some ball. He beats his man and brings Nick Baker down. But I like the fact that I'm pretty sure he's glad he got he has a sack, but he understands what the game is. No need to celebrate. You go out there and get a sack, man. Hopefully get you get your ball the team back. Go to the side. Uh, get your team the ball back in. Now a mistake and the first one by SFU of significance. So the Colonels are gonna get the football in the red zone at the 11. Wow. Nathan Torney out of Australia had to go back and swallow that one up. By the way, he's from Australia. They're watching today 16-hour advance on time, so they were getting up this morning and viewing the game. Is that what it is, 16 next, hours? Next day, Sunday, huh? Oh, they got the notes. Temperatures in the 80s. Wow. So Tim Repo's team's got a chance to get a score here. And Nick Hill, is, he's, he isn't going to like that because his team has pretty much played a clean, disciplined game, and you don't want them to let up mentally, and that's one of those mental arrows right there, and you don't want a lot out to happen. But Tim Rebo wants his team to get something positive going, so now they have an opportunity to get the ball first and goal, first and 10 inside the red zone. And Quaid play action. And just has to get rid of it in the direction of Colin Guggenheim, but he was double teamed back in the 25. 
And I got to give it to you. Jamon Mathis just was. He wasn't going anywhere. He wasn't going to be fooled by the naked boot. No. Doing his job and continuing to stay dialed in and focus even with his team is up right now. You, Because that defense don't want to give up any points. Trust me. They don't want to give up any points at all. And if they do give up any points, you know who they're going to blame it on? The punt team. Certainly would be four down territory unless they decide to kick a field goal. But McQuaid needs six. Now he's going to run. Pat McQuaid carrying and out of bounds. Just shy of the 10 will bring up third down. Most lopsided win for Southern Illinois back on October 28th. And Western Illinois 63 to nothing. Today it's 35 zip. Well, you know Antonio James wants the pitch to shut out. Of course he does. Oh yeah. Can still get a first down. McQuaid gonna step up and run. Pat McQuaid. Brought down close to the six. And the kid who had the great first half and the pick in the second half, Branson Combs up to make the stop. Combs a junior, 6'3", 222, he's got another season left. So we'll head to the fourth quarter. It's Southern Illinois trying to keep its shutout alive. After three in the first run of the FCS championship, Southern Illinois 35, nickels nothing. Back with the fourth quarter in a moment. Seen right here at stake is the shutout for Southern Illinois after three first quarter touchdowns and two in the third. Jim Barber, Doc Holliday, fourth and goal for the Colonels at the SIU seven. And the crowd standing here, Saluki fans want to keep that zero on the board. Trips to the right of the quarterback, McQuaid. He's looking to his right and throwing. He's got a receiver incomplete. Broken up at the goal line. Iverson Brown, number one, the safety. That's one of those Turn situations. Great throw in the route was there, but Iverson Brown is almost like, how dare you? <laughs> Don't you ever. <laughs> Smack his hand like like when you double dip Jim only got his hand smacked. <laughs> you didn't double dip the deck. It's a very good analogy, <laughs> I think. <laughs> By the way, Iverson is uh, looking at dentistry as a possible career. Played four years at Illinois State. A lot of transfers on the defensive side of the ball for SIU, and they have paid huge dividends. Yes, they have. Man. Now a chance to play the reserves. Make sure everybody stays healthy, which is always important. LaShawn Lester getting a carry there out of Somerville, Georgia, a sophomore. And you also give players and guys an opportunity who practice hard, who don't necessarily get a chance to get some carries and get some plays to get in there. So not only are they getting some playing time, they're getting some playing time in a playoff situation. So hey, man. Uh, it keeps the team morale up like that as well. It's a field of 24 to start in the FCS playoffs. will be reduced to 16 with the weekend done. And SIU will be one of the remaining 16. But now the rest of the road is away from home. Got their first ever game at Saluki Stadium in the playoffs. Now they'll venture out west. And the folks in Carbondale will be staying up late next Saturday night. 10 o'clock Eastern start, 9 o'clock Central. Got a pretty happy crowd here today. Yes. Down here, even the ones in the suite that we're looking to see if they're going to leave so I can go get a Pepsi. <laughs> we'll try to clear a path for you. <laughs> Third down. No reason to throw the ball here. Why not run it? 
Huge gain. And then he lost her again. That's the 45-yard line. Well, Sean Lester, who carries for close to 40. Well, just about everybody that carries the ball today is having a day. But look at this run by LaShawn Lester. You get it and watch the vision and the cut in. The, eh, eh. Very impressive run, but I like that because there was no wasted movements. You see him make a couple of quick cuts, but he gets right up the field. Just a great run by Mr. LL Cool J, LaShawn <laughs> Lester. Now the rushing game has been terrific today. It has been good from the start. The shutout continues intact. Tonight, now with a five touchdown lead and get just about everybody involved. There's a penalty flag at the end. There was some pushing and shoving. As one of the Salukis hit the floor. Like 63 to center, Jacob Cowgill was pushed down, and that's not easy because Cowgill's six foot and 267. Well, you you know Nichols is they're frustrated, they're frustrated, they're disappointed, uh, disappointed, and they're angry. So situations like that. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 97 defense. Son Dana Whalen. to the end of the run, automatic first down. But you still want to keep your composure and keep your cool. I understand you're mad and upset, but you can't get thrown into situations like that. But it's a nice flop. Very nice flop, but still. I understand you're upset. He's made some plays, but uh, I'm pretty, pretty sure Coach Rebo is going to tell him, look, look, keep your cool, keep your composure. we got to still be a disciplined bunch. Too many penalties today for Nichols. In fact, more penalties than rushing yards. Now a chance to spread the wealth. That's Jalen Benefield with his first carry. You know, sir, from Eastern Illinois. Sorry, Doc. No, no, I'm sorry, Jim. What I'm saying, a consistent theme that every running back that comes in, you know whose side they go to? Toure. He ran into Toure right now because didn't nobody even want to get in front of Toure so he, for him to be able to block. 6'6", 310 at that right tackle position. Along with Sam Newman. Jacob Cowgill, Aiden Logan, and Jake Green all up front. And they have had a game. In place of backup linemen as well today. Well, for SIU with the muff punt, didn't give up any points. And that's always a good feeling because you want to walk away. Not only with a one-sided win and a look ahead, but not saying, gee, if we hadn't done that. And giving up a score here, it had been a perfect day. Well, so far it's close to perfect. But you know what, Nick Hill, even though he hates that that happened, he's probably glad it happened because he want to have something to still coach and point out and see, like, look, you all got to stay focused the entire game. You can't be letting up and losing focus and losing concentration. Wait a minute, so. you're telling me coaches are like that? Oh, yeah, yeah. So he has something to coach and get on the players about. Sounds like it happened to you in Memphis. Oh, yeah, uh, quite often. <laughs> Baker over the middle with a strike. Backup wide receiver Zach Gibson with a catch. Zach's dad, Oliver, was a defensive tackle. Nine years in the NFL, actually an offensive tackle. That's what we call a, a, a strong-handed catch. He just gloved that with two hands, but his hands are so big and strong, he just snapped it and was able to keep it and hold on to it even though he was in track. Had some heat on it then, they did. And a field second carry of the drive. Got us a new quarterback in. How you doing, Hunter Simmons? Hunter from Marion, Illinois, not too far away from here. Got two quarterbacks, Baker and Simmons, both good with numbers. 
Baker's getting his MBA in finance, and Simmons is majoring in accounting. Simmons a big, big, big guy too. Looks good. 6'3", 240. He looks, looks, looks like a quarterback. Yes. Had a chance to walk on for an FBS team. Said nope. We'll come here and play. And he's getting a chance to play the last nine minutes. Some of these kids who don't get a look and still wind up playing college football at the FCS level, it's got a pretty, pretty, pretty special, I would think. It has to be. And I always tell players, man, go where you go where you're wanted. Yes. Don't go somewhere that you may necessarily want to go, but they don't necessarily want you. Go somewhere where you're wanted and you're valued and you get an opportunity to play other than going somewhere at one of these bigger programs that they don't necessarily need you, but they'll take you and sit you on the bench so they can keep you away from other programs. In other words, dance with people that want to dance you're with exactly you. Exactly right? right. Play clock down to three. And it'll bring up a fourth down. Well, Sean Lester, who had that 44 yard run moments ago, carrying there. He has some good feet, Jim. I'm watching LaShawn Lester's feet. He, he, he has what we call, I like to call that Sammy Davis Jr. That's that tap tap. The tap tap. Yeah. See, it's a tap tap. You, did you see the six? You just did the Sammy Davis. Yeah. You just see, it's a tap tap. I like running back to have the tap tap. You got the tap tap on. What did you have? At Memphis? I'm straight. I'm straight off tackle, man. Okay. I'm, yeah, I'm straight off tackle. Yeah, I'm straight off tackle. I, ain't, I, don't, I don't do no tap tap. Simmons incomplete. Credit Hill was not trying to pour things on here. Could have attempted a field goal. Three points would have meant nothing. And decided on fourth down to shoot for a first down. Halfway through the fourth quarter. Back to business after the break. Lights have been out for some time as twilight approaches. Last SIU shutout against Western back on October 28th. Nichols held to 50 yards on the ground, averaging three times as much. The penalties have been a killer. Seven for 84 yards, prolonged a couple of drives in the first half. And as noted, uh, some of those penalties that were called were actually declined on top of the seven for 84. It's been a tough day, to say the least, for Nichols. But you can't discount the season they have. Undefeated in the Southland Conference. Coach Revo, coach of the year. Good point. You know, got some superlatives, so they don't really have anything to hang their head about. They just came and faced a very good, very physical, very big SIU team. I love what Coach Rebo is has, has done with this program and what he's doing with this program. Yeah, certainly kick kick started the non-conference season with some really tough competition. Jacob Foss, by the way, is the backup quarterback in the game out of Huntsville, Alabama. He was on the practice squad, was number 12 last year. So the benchers are emptying here. Everybody getting a chance to put their name in the book. With six and a half left. Hey, Jim, don't get it twisted. The, those defenders out there for SIU, those subs, oh, they got pressure on them because those starters, they like, man, don't y'all give up this egg. Gotta Do not give up out. this egg. Yeah, oh, don't yeah. give up this egg. Foss gets out of trouble. And brought down at the 28. And so it brings up fourth down. Aiden Stevens. And that was a good tackle. Form. Fundamental. Coached up. Jalen Reed back to receive, calling for a fair catch. Completes it with five and a half left. Step aside. Back to work moments ago. Nichols punt. And it looks like somebody, 33, 
Chris Presto got a glove on it letting them know I got it with the Indy. That's all it takes. I got it with the Indy. He wants everybody to know I blocked that now. Coach. Give me I got it with the Indy. Oh, Jim, he's like Presto's like you point one finger at me. I point two fingers back at you and get a block point. It's Still block having a lot of point. Still, nope. Five and a half left. Good opportunity to get everybody involved here is Cal Wiedemann makes the catch. Wiedemann with his first reception today from Omaha, Nebraska, number 84. Got a dad joke for you. You know what Cal Wiedemann, you know what his family is saying if they're listening. Wiedemann. Wiedemann. <laughs> I know. Hey, what? Hey, look. You know what's amazing? You don't even write these things down. <laughs> no, man. It just comes off naturally. <laughs> oh. Play clock at two. That's a nice catch out there. Zach Gibson's second reception of the day. Strong hand man. Strong hand man with another strong hand catch. I see you, Mr. Gibson. He had three receptions, 71 yards against Missouri State. Run off a couple more minutes on the clock here. 23 first downs now for the game. So we're looking ahead to the Vandals next week. Full week of practice for Southern Illinois, certainly. But a move out west, so things change a little bit in terms of preparation. Got to get on the plane. You do, man. And you're a couple of, uh, couple of hours behind as well, so uh, you got to take that into account. But it's a late game, so they have all day to wait and rest and relax and kind of get. That's not a huge time frame, time difference, but I know when I was playing, I used to hate those late games. I want to play. I don't want to wait around all day watching other people play on television and doing walkthroughs and eating food and getting food. Most players feel that way. Coaches feel that way, too. They get a little antsy. Penalty flag on the play. Did somebody jump? What a catch by Gibson. There's another flag on the play. Well, was the first one off sides and the second pass interference? What it looks like to me, and Gibson is out there putting in work. He is. You got to give it to SIU quarterback. He saw that he had a free play. Just throw it out there to Gibson. And Gibson, Mawson people. They're bounced by both teams. Offside, defense, number 91 in the neutral zone at the snap. Pass interference, offense. Those fouls on offset. Whoa. Remain third. Offensive third pass interference. I guess that's, that's how he was able to ball, Stephen. If you push him up off of you. That's why everybody was strolling back. Correct. There's the offsides. The whole Free left play. side is the mm -hmm. offside, but yeah. Now let's see with the push, if we can pick this up and the throw by Hunter Simmons. see it good catch good adjustment three minutes to go a couple of penalties late in this game against the Salukis ball start offense number 73 five yard penalty take it down said this was his dream job and he has worked some wonders here beating the number one two and three and four ranked teams in his history at SIU not to mention the fact he has beaten FBS teams like Indiana and Northwestern in his career 
You know, it, it, it means more when you're a coach and you're able to go back and coach at your alma mater or somewhere that somewhere the place that you played and you play well, you're able to give it more emotion and it uh, more loyalty to you because you're more invested in the program because you're coaching young men who that's you. So you can give it a lot more love and a lot more, you know, uh, affection than somebody coming in from the outside can give it. Certainly. And in an atmosphere where coaches get up and go a lot of times, it's kind of refreshing. Yeah, it is. 145 remains. Contact at the 40-yard line. They're going to let that go. It'll be fourth and 11. All they did is got their features tangled up. It's just a features thing. Not feet, just features. Got their features tangled up. That's let it go, right? Let it go. Yeah, let it go. Replay officials will tell you if there's nothing significant in a game that minus targeting that late in the game, not all plays will be reviewed simply because of the significance. Punt inside of 25. 96 seconds to go. SAU headed to the second round. Live. Winter darkness now here in southern Illinois as the moon shines bright. Waning moments of the fourth quarter. Southern Illinois about to punch its ticket to the second round. The NCAFCS championship coverage will continue next week. On ESPN Plus, for more information, visit NCAA.com, the home for all 90 NCAA championships, which means you could catch SIU in Idaho. 10 o'clock Eastern, 9 Central. So Jake Delmato getting an opportunity there out of Mandeville, Louisiana. Picks up the first down and runs to the 42nd and a gain of 19. The Colonels would like to dent the scoreboard if they can. Seconds left. But nothing wrong with playing out the string here either. No, and them, them SIU defenders, those backups, they, they know the assignment. They know the assignment, and you can hear the starters on the sideline barking and yelling at them too, because if they give up anything, they're going to have to hear it in that locker room. 25 seconds left. Why not shoot for six? Caught! Tyron Montgomery. They're going to have a chance to get their first points with 13 seconds to go. Well, maybe they lulled uh, SIU into a, a little sleep there after a running play and block moved. Now 10 seconds remaining. Can they get a score? And they'll have one chance to do so unless there's a defensive call at the end three of the game. The game three throw. seconds. Three seconds on the game clock. Well, here's the drama. Thank you. Huh? Well, and the, the thing about this, Coach Rebo, he understands that Nick Hill and his defense would love to have a shutout. He could easily go for three points right there to take it off the board. But he's like, you know what? I'm going to let you all have the shutout if y'all can stop, or stop us from scoring a touchdown. One play to break it. There is some drama in this game. Trips to the right. Foss to the end zone. Incomplete. Game over. Shut out intact. Yeah. 
two head coaches who met prior to the game and conversed for a while over the smiles at the end. Good look at Jacob Boss, who almost got him on the board. Nick Baker, who did get his team on the board twice. Salukis to the second round for the third time in the last four seasons. We're looking forward to talking to Nick Baker and the head coach, Nick Hill, in a moment. And so don't go away. And yeah. just a very impressive performance by the Southern Illinois offense yes. and defense. Nick Baker comes out here, handles business. This defense, I heard a lot about it, did my research, watched some film. They were exactly what I saw on, well, they won't, won't watch film anymore. Exactly what I watched on <laughs> digital video and what I read in the notes. Yeah, I know what you mean, though. <laughs> That's a good sportsmanship on both sides here, as we anticipated. And the school song. Guys probably know the words by by now, and it's tough on the other end. Mm, very tough. You've been there. I've been there, man. It's tough, man. But you know this is the last game, man, and uh, to go out like this, you don't have anything to be sad about. Well, you lost, but I'm pretty sure. Nice say you head coach Nick Hill standing by to join us here. Nick, congratulations. And as we look back to the way this game began, what was significant for you guys? I just think getting off to a good start. You know, I like the, the guys uh, mentality coming into this thing. And uh, just so you were going into week 12. We know what it takes to win and, and um, what the formula is for this team to win. And getting off to a good start was big. I mean, going down on the first drive and scoring and then coming up with the interception and going up 14 to nothing and just like the way that I mean again I can't say enough about our defense to shut out a team in the first round of the playoff it's uh, given up three points last week uh, they just played outstanding and talking about your defense coach but your offense as well especially your quarterback I see him standing there Nick Baker he's able to go out there and manipulate this offense didn't make any mistakes and put up the points that you all put up talk about how he played yeah Nick's starting to play uh, his best ball I mean he set the record today for the most touchdowns ever here, uh, you know, over 9,000 9, yards passing. So we've, we've played a lot of games together. And uh, when he's when he's distributing like that and when he's, uh, you know, making plays and getting the ball out of his hands, you know, he's a, he's a competitor. We talked about that on our call. Just the, the number one thing about Nick Baker is his will to win and his competitiveness, and yeah, he's a winner. Nick, what do you know about the, the Idaho Vandals? I know you said you were prepping just for this opponent this week, but you're heading to play the Big Sky out west next Saturday night. Yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, Coach Eck, I got a lot of respect for. I like Coach Eck a lot. I don't know him super well. Just we competed against each other here when he was at South Dakota State as the offensive coordinator. Did an unbelievable job, and we've been able to connect um, several times in season and in the off season. But just I have a lot of respect for the way uh, he goes about it, always has a fun offense. And uh, so I know they've had a heck of a season. Uh, they've challenged themselves. They've had a heck of a schedule. Uh, you get into the second round of the playoffs, it's going to be a, a team that's well worthy of their seed. And uh, so we're just going to have to have a good week of prep and dive into this team and, and uh, go out there and compete. We do appreciate your time. Best luck uh, in the second round. All right. I appreciate you guys. Thanks, Coach. And coach will now hand the headset over to his star quarterback, Nick Baker. A great effort by Nichols. Terrific season in the Southland Conference. Nick Baker, who broke the all-time record for passing touchdowns, joining us here. Congratulations, Nick. And as you look at, first of all, the accomplishment of winning the first round, what's it mean to you? Uh, I mean, it's huge. I mean, you want to be put in these positions when uh, at the beginning of the season, you want to be in a playoff game, home playoff game, got it done, and looking forward. Hey, Nick, it seems like you were in total control of the offense like that. That's what we expect from you. But just talk about the confidence that you played with because I saw you a couple of times <laughs> brushing, them, brushing them haters off your pants. <laughs> so it seems like you were really confident and feeling good about the game that you played today. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, as a quarterback, as a leader on the team, you got you to have a little swag and get your guys going. And, yeah, I mean, uh, you got to. You got to have a little bit. You were through your 66th 
and 67th touchdown pass. You now have the all-time mark for that SIU. Does that mean anything to you? Uh, I mean, it's something I'll look back on and be super proud of, but right now I'm uh, cliche, but I'm, I'm focused on the next one, but uh, no, it's special, for sure. So a little Nick Baker in action with a little fake there and finding his tight end, Aiden Quinn, for a yeah. touchdown. How about Mr. Quinn's reception there? I mean, that's a great play. Um, we, we've done that look all year, a little screen. We do we do that play a lot in a lot of different ways, and we did a little pump off of it today. Um, he sold it well, made a great catch. He's been, he's been great for us all year. Young man, enjoy your Saturday night. Good luck uh, heading out west next Saturday night. Yes, can't wait. Thank you guys so much. Good right, game, Nick. Thank you. Our special guest here. And a 35-0 win for SIU. Move them into the second round to play Idaho. Meanwhile, Richmond put 49 on NC Central today to advance to the second round. Mercer trying to get a date with the defending champion, South Dakota State. And Villanova in Philly will host the winner of Duquesne and Youngstown State. That is a late start this afternoon in Ohio. Doc's been a pleasure. It has been fun, man. Thank you all. And as you take a look at the other side of the bracket, North Dakota State's been the monster all these years, dethroned last year by South Dakota State, but an easy winner over Drake today. Nothing but touchdowns in the Sacramento State-North Dakota game in a final of 42-35 in Chattanooga and Austin P. Still playing in Delaware, went back and forth with Lafayette. We'll head now to Montana next week as both Montana teams will be at home for starts at 1 Eastern and 9 Eastern, all games, as you know, on the ESPN networks in the FCS championship. So for Doc Holliday, Jim Barber saying so long from Saluki Stadium in Carbondale, Illinois. Final score, 35-0 SIU. All games airing on the ESPN networks. Streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN.